This is Strictly Business, presented by the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. Sponsored in part by the Law Offices of Young Wooldridge, San Joaquin Community Hospital. And now here's your host, Cindy Pollard, President and CEO of the Greater Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce. And welcome back. My name is Katie Allen with PG&E filling in for Cindy Pollard. Well, 60% of the world's illegal drugs are consumed by American drug users. Two million Americans use heroin, six million use cocaine, 18 million have alcohol abuse problems, and an estimated 23 million people use marijuana at least four times in a week. Those are astounding statistics. And that's according to the American Council for Drug Education. Of all drug users, 74.8% are employed and active in our workplace. That means that 12.9 million individuals actively use drugs in the workplace. That's according to the Occupational Safety and Health Administration. Joining us now is Juanita Webb of Contraband Control Specialists to talk about substance abuse in the workplace. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. You're welcome, Katie. Thanks for having us here today. And these statistics don't lie. It is obviously an ongoing um, epidemic in this country. How can you um, tell us about substance abuse impacts in the in the workplace? Well, you know, it, it really is a major problem, and I'm so glad you shared the statistics because they are overwhelming and they're alarming to realize that so many people who are using drugs are in the workplace. In fact, working. They're yes, in the workplace, absolutely. and they have to be because what do they need to be able to purchase their drugs? They need an income, and so that's why they're there. But really some of the concerns about um, ha- drugs in the workplace that, you know, Obviously, employers need to protect themselves. Yeah. When they've got people who are in the workplace that are on drugs, there needs to be some protection not only for themselves as the employer, but think about the employees who need to be concerned about safety, who need to be concerned about their coworkers, you know, maybe c- causing an injury or an accident, safety concerns. Um, even the cost to the businesses can just be overwhelming. And so very important issues that need to be addressed. Absolutely. Tell me about some of the signs, some individuals that are watching or listening this morning. What are some of the signs if you believe maybe you're a boss and, and one of your you know, employees, you're seeing some signs or your colleague, you're seeing some signs that, you know, people in the workplace, you want to be sensitive. So, you know, what are some of the signs that you can look for? Well, just like any concern that you might have in the workplace with an employee's performance, you want to obviously watch performance indicators. Mm -hmm. Because generally, if someone's using drugs or on some kind of, whether it's legal or illegal, those have impairing effects, and we want to keep an eye on that. So if we see someone's performance is deteriorating or going downhill, um, behavior signs, you know, there can be a number of behavior signs depending on what drug they're using. Uh, All of the illegal drugs have impairing qualities. Some of the legal drugs drugs even have impairing qualities. Um, I mean, we think about even alcohol, you know, it causes a reduction in your motor skills. So watching for that, seeing someone who's looking sleepy all the time, Mm -hmm. or on the other side, someone who's highly agitated or excited or very talkative, and they aren't always that way. There's a number of different signs that employers can watch for, but really the performance and the behavior is what you're really analyzing each time. And you're talking about the cost to businesses too, Mm -hmm. that there is a cost associated to this when employers um, have a substance abuse issues. Talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, some of them are very direct cost. If you've got a policy, obviously you're going to pay for your policy. You're going to pay for the drug testing cost. But what's so alarming is the hidden costs that are there. Um, The things like lost productivity, um, absenteeism, just the safety issues. There can even be, if you have a um, well-established program for drug testing, there can even be reductions in your workers' comp insurance premiums, Mm -hmm. your liability insurance premiums. But as soon as there is an accident, the liability ability that's on an employer if they don't do drug testing just you know exponentially increases because they haven't been aware of the concerns that are in their workplace when it comes to drugs. Yeah, you talked about drug testing and when should that become a part of employment practices? Well, I would say when you start your business. Okay, there you <laughs> go. That's an, that. when, when your business starts, that's something you really yeah. have to look at. You know, most employers currently do pre-employment testing. That's an accepted practice without any type of policy. It's done initially. 
correct. It's done when you hire them. But, you know, it doesn't start stop there. Um, you know, obviously drug users are going to continue using, and so we want to make sure that you catch that um, as quickly as you can once they become employed with you. And so having a drug testing policy is really important. Most employers will have a um, typical, you can't use drugs in the workplace mm -hmm. type of policy in their employment practices. But if they don't have an actual testing policy, they can't actually test the employees for drugs other than pre-employment. So it has to be in their policy. Right. So they do have to have a written test testing policy, and that's the important piece that most employers don't follow. Don't follow. And I was going to talk about, for some that may be listening, the policy aspect of it. Would mm -hmm. that be an annual policy, or would that be every two years of the drug testing, every six months? What is your suggestion from an employer standpoint? Well, once you've developed a, um, an effective policy, really it's just a matter of updating that when there are changes in the law or there's new um, information that comes out about drug testing. And so that can be every three to five years that it's updated. Okay. So it's not an every year type thing where it has to Got be it. renewed. There might be some internal changes that you would have, you know, who's responsible responsible, those kinds of things that are names in the policy, but not necessary to rewrite the policy every year, not a problem. Let's talk about um, the elements that should be in these policies. Okay. Well, there are a number of things that, that obviously should be there. Um, obviously, you want to talk about the purpose and the scope of the yes. policy. Who's it going to cover? Uh, what positions is it going to cover? In the state of California, um, it's required that random testing be suspicionless. And so if you're going to do random testing, you do need to identify the types of positions, mm -hmm. not the people, but the types of positions that will be covered under that random testing. Um, you'll also want to talk about any other prohibited activities. Um, you know, uh, is using alcohol on the premises illegal? In some of our, the industries that we have here in Kern County, even bringing alcohol onto the premises is illegal. And so you want to talk about those kinds of um, activities. Also, whether or not the policy is going to just refer to illegal drugs, or is it also going to cover legal drugs? Mm -hmm. uh, that can be over-the-counter, that can be prescription medications, especially if they have impairing qualities that can impact an employee's ability to do their job. So those are a couple of the things. You want to talk about um, the rights of the employees, obviously. What rights do they have under the policy? The rights of the employer as well. Uh, what, what are the collection methods that are going to be used? How are they going to collect the sample? that are going to be tested that needs to be discussed in the policy so that employees are aware of how the, the collections will be done. Um, any educational materials that you can provide to the employees or the supervisors would be important, as well as then an acknowledgement from the employee that they've received it yeah. and speaking about any disciplinary action that might occur if they were to violate the policy. So Not only really making that policy, but ensuring the employees understand it and right. it's communicated to them as well. So right, absolutely. Yeah, a big piece of that. And going back to just, just the um, subject of, of overall abuse, what are elements of work that may contribute to abuse of substances? Well, you know, the most obvious one is stress. Yeah. You know, when people get stressed, they indulge in all kinds of things, whether it's, you know, overindulgence in eating or overindulgence in alcohol or potentially getting into using other substances that may not be legal. But even the fact of not having a deterrent to keep employees from engaging in inappropriate behaviors can be an issue in a workplace. So if there's nothing there that's going to stop them, they more easily might in, get involved in drugs or using illegal substances. So, And we're going into the holidays, which for mm -hmm. a lot of individuals, um, work on its own can be stressful for right. some, but then adding in um, the holidays it can um, lead some to um, possibly um, getting depressed or having a hard time during the holidays. Right. And so how, is this, how can employers during this time um, really help their employees to um, stay focused in the workplace, especially during the stressful time of the holidays? Right. Well, I think helping them just to, you know, encourage encouraging them, being there to listen, to hear what the concerns and issues are, being an, an open and available to them to hear mm -hmm. what's going on, listen to them about the pressures of their mm -hmm. work environment can really be a beneficial to them. Um, and then just providing someone that can be available to them. There's programs outside of the workplace, employee assistance programs that can be utilized by employees to help eliminate some of those stresses and pressures. And I was well. going to ask you about spotting it because um, mm -hmm. once you, you do spot it, um, how should an individual react? And I think every business, it determines on the field how it should be handled. But in general, what, it, what is your suggestion? for that as well? Well, if an employer suspects that an employee is under the influence of some kind of um, drug, whether it's legal or illegal, number mm -hmm. one, if they have a policy, 
they need to follow their policy. Mm -hmm. That's an important piece. If they don't have a policy, then they need to handle it as they would any other concern with performance or behavior in the workplace. Mm -hmm. If they see something where the employee is unable to perform um, because of being disoriented or appearing under the influence, recommending taking them home. Mm -hmm. um, don't allow them to drive home, but actually taking them home, just like you would at a party if someone was drunk, you would not allow them to get behind the wheel. <clears throat> Excuse me, but you would assist them, give them a taxi, take them home. Um, so we would always encourage that kind of behavior instead of just telling them to go. And why is it important for the workplace um, employers to discuss this with their employees? Well, so that employees are aware of it. Uh, it's very interesting when we go out to present a new policy mm -hmm. to a, a company, uh, the number of questions that come up from the employees about, you know, how is this going to affect me? Mm -hmm. What does this mean for me? You know, what about this? What about that? They really want to know and want to understand so that they don't violate the policy. Yep. Most employees really want to comply, really want to follow the rules, and we want to make sure they understand it. And many times if you just say, well, now we have a drug testing policy, they don't know what that means. And you really need to spend the time talking with them, discussing it with them so that they understand how their actions and behaviors at home or at work could have an impact on their employment. And this is such an important service that you offer. And how often do you see employers, when they make a new policy, really need an outside group to help them you know, come in to, to help their employees better understand it? Um, well, I think that's I think that's pretty regular. We yeah. always go in to help yeah. and to assist and to implement the policy when we write a new policy for a company, because we're the experts. Yeah. We understand. You can it. answer the questions. We can answer yeah. the questions <laughs> that maybe the employer is going. I don't know. That was a good question, that, though. I thought I should have thought that one. Right, but that was an excellent question. I appreciate that you asked it, and they even sometimes ask those that we get stumped on. So yeah, absolutely. Um, but we always get answers for them, and I think yeah. it's important that they involve someone. Um, whoever they decide to hire to you to do this process to establish their policy, number one, to make sure it's an effective policy, that it really is going to not only meet the law, the requirements mm -hmm. of the law, yeah. but also that it's going to be effective for them to be able to be the deterrent that they're looking for and to help stop any current abuse that might be going on in the workplace. Wonderful. Well, it's been so great to have you here. And um, hearing these statistics and, and, and knowing how prevalent this is, this mm -hmm. is something that's extremely important. And going into the holidays, unfortunately, right. we can see more of that. Yes, absolutely. So, so. thank you so much, um, Juanita Webb, with Contraband Control Specialists here talking about substance abuse in the workplace and how to spot it. Thank, thank you, Thank you Katie. again, and have a happy Thanksgiving. You too. Thank you. Well, I'm Katie Allen for PG&E, filling in for Cindy Pollard. You're watching Strictly Business, and we'll be right back.